Okay, hi everybody. Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Everything Design Show. Uh, today I am very honored to have um a uh, a good friend of mine. So we've known each other for a while. Um, he's also a friend of uh, one of our previous speakers. Um, um, uh, Man. Um, and his and our today our our guest today on the Everything Design Show is uh Dr. Lee Weidan. Um, and um, I've I've known uh, Weidan uh since about two thousand and maybe fourteen, two thousand fifteen, somewhere around there. Um, a good six years, and we've been uh we were PhD uh students at Swinburne, so he was a uh colleague um that was um doing uh the PhD together with me uh and he was um you know looking at um you know uh he was also a design PhD student so everybody say hello to um Weidan hello hi Weidan how are you Good, good. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming today. Um, so yeah, we yeah no 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 no. Thanks for coming. So I mean, um, the thing that I've always uh felt that was interesting about uh about Weidan uh was um was really his his uh theoretical theoretical perspectives that um we were uh, were, were applying into the design um to the design industry. So I think um a lot of our conversations that we've had during our PhD. Uh, candidature, we were always talking about how P- the the we were talking about how the industry uh, as well as the the academic perspectives were very closely related to each other, right? Um, but you know, rather than me talk so much about this, why don't why don't Weidan, Why don't you introduce yourself and and then you can tell us what you're doing now and what you've been doing for the for the past few years as a as a design researcher? Yeah, sure. Um, so. I'm right now a design researcher based in Melbourne, Australia, um, and I'm working for an insurance company called uh, AHM. Um, so I'm a sole researcher there. Um, they have a design and digital team there, but I'm the only researcher who's res- responsible for um, different research projects as well as uh, management of it. So. Uh, it's been quite of a journey to put me from my first job in Australia until now. So before the first job I did in Australia, um, uh, like mentioned by Nick a little bit, I did my PhD in Melbourne as well. Um, so that was my academic experience uh, before getting to the industry. So actually, I had the idea of going back to the industry even before doing the PhD, mm. because I had some industry experience back in China where I was grown up and um, educated. So um, I was doing a bit of interaction design, experience design in China. Um, and after a bit more than a year, I decided to go to uh, Australia to pursue a PhD. It's kind of a multiple reasons for why I pursue a PhD at that moment. I think the main reason um, that I decided to do so is um, I I felt a little bit different. Well, not a little bit. It's actually a big difference between being a designer and being a researcher. I mean, at this moment, like when we get into 2020, we know that for a lot of roles like UX research, uh, sorry, UX designer or product designer, they do both design and research. But actually at at that time when I uh, was working in China, like 20, I think it's around 2012, um, people are still doing the specialized work. Like researchers are doing more fundamental research. Well, designers, especially UX designers like me, um, did a lot of wireframing work. Um, mm. So when I like when I communicate my design outcome to my stakeholders, I feel it a bit like difficult in terms of defining the standard of the quality of UX design. Like, what what do we coin? the as good design mm. for everyone like what's the standard there yeah and um there's still some hierarchical there existing the organization in terms of 
the standard of the design had been coined by the people maybe from a higher level in the organization and the decision makings are also made mostly by the higher level people rather than you know like in a bottom-up strategy um but differently for researchers i think they have the voice of the customers they they do interviews they do research they have the first-hand data to talk about to communicate with different stakeholders to say hey we got the insights from the customers or the users so this is kind of a, a bit of more standardized uh process mm. where people think okay this is not come from my own mind side yeah. it's not come from the the researcher's mind it's it's from the customers but the researchers just synthesize the data and mm. communicate to other people yeah so at that moment i was like okay that sounds more interesting because it's it had this objectivity like as in what's as long as i pursue us like a good uh, research process i get the valid data from mm. customers but also i can influence the decision making across the design process yeah. uh, based on what the customer user said rather yeah. than just for myself um so then yeah because of that i know it sounds like a big step of just to transforming myself to researcher by doing a phd mm. um but that's one of the main reasons um yeah. so yeah so i came to australia to to um to do the phd and it was the topic is, was mainly about human centered design because yeah. many people ask me what's your what's your major of the phd yeah i think it's the, like most difficult question very for me high, because <laughs> um as we know a lot of a lot of a phd candidate candidate do the uh, like they generate the topic mm. by um combining design area and other areas like technology or social, anthropology yeah, social science or yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah so it's not a it's not a pure topic on design itself mm. so for me it's really about uh the res- the methods of knowing people and understanding them and then um providing provide the value of of research to the organization and make decisions mm. so that's why because of that root of my mind i yeah. um planned at that time to collaborate with some companies in the in the industry um for my phd project so i i would rather do it in a bit of more practical way yeah with you know meeting the requirements of the theoretical basis of mm. phd but also finishing a project like like i'm the consultant and i'm i'm providing value to yeah. some companies in the industry so it's industry led it yeah. was industry led lah for yours your 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 PhD was very industry focused in that sense, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. But the yeah. tricky thing is, we have to um, um, we have to use some theoretical basis to to meet the requirements of doing PhD rather than just the pure pr- practical of course, project. Of course. Yeah. That's what that's what yeah. the value of the PhD does bring, lah. But I think I mean what you spoke about. I think there's a few things that to to unpack here. So I think the first thing I I want to bring up is um, I think. For a lot of people um, that do PhDs, right? Um, they are they. I I've heard for reasons to do PhDs, right? So I, the reasons that people do PhD is to you know get a job in academia, to do yeah. research, um, or maybe they have a very specific type of research that they want to do, right? And maybe they want to study a specific um, um, uh, a specific industry in that sense. Now. not to say that your 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 reason is. I mean, um, I think your reason is quite interesting because. Um, for you, you said you wanted to go. You 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 had a sense that you always wanted to go back into industry. And in fact, that the PhD was something that would add value to that journey of yours, right? So actually, yeah. my my question is that you know, um, why did you feel that the the PhD was valuable for you to go into? To help you get into industry, I, I mean, later you spoke about also about how the 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 research is separate from the UX and things like that, right? But but I think yeah. at the core of it, you know, um, I think what was the drive, the main drive, or what's the main reason, um, that 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 you really wanted to go and do a PhD, and what was the value that you saw the PhD, um, you know, uh, for you as somebody who wanted to go back into industry and work? Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um. I think the main reason is getting myself trained 
in the pure academic way mm. and and manipulate the skills and also men's side of the sorry the mindset of of doing research whatever in academia or industry although i decided to go back to the industry because before doing it i kind of did some <laughs> did some desk research even i was not a researcher at that time mm. about um what it was like being a design researcher or ux researcher in the I industry see. yeah and i found it quite um similar in terms of research process um to the academic way of doing research like probably nick you know, also know the process of doing it like we we had a we could write up a plan about what the research is about mm. we go out e either for field work or do lab interviews or whatever and we gather the, the data and then we analyze the data and then we have insights and then communicate so for quite a lot of um, academic research is also fall into this process but it's uh the delivery is a bit more academic or theoretical because it may aims to contributing or expanding a theory or a framework or creating a framework mm. to feedback to the academic area yeah. the industry the process could be also similar um, but the value of it is to to help the companies to get closer to their customers and then make decisions that um, align with their business strategy or even challenge the business mm -hmm. business strategy if it's helpful to reduce the risks the risks of a wrong uh, or the or the mistakes in decision making so um, I, th I thought it was valuable of doing it because I want to get into the more rooted area of doing research rather than just going to the industry and because I think it's a different depth of mm. of doing research. Like for PhD, one of the um, most outstanding difference compared to the research industry is how much you delve into the theories mm. or the theoretical framework in terms of writing thesis. So it's kind of a inseparable part of mm. of writing up the theoretical thesis. Yeah. So I was not I was not reluctant to that at all. Actually, I was interested in that part because, you know, like most of the research uh, positions, this design uh, research or UX research, they borrowed a lot of theories or methods from yeah, the yeah. academic area, from psychology, right? like if from your work. Yeah. Uh, from, yeah. yeah from, so yeah. it's it's from anthropology, mm. and they may do survey, uh, which is from sociology. Yeah. So I think most of Maybe I was wrong, but I was thinking that most of the original, authentic treasure were, you know, lying in the academic area. So I want to get into the most deep root part of doing research by, you know, learning the theories and frameworks and how we uh, think about research from a more theoretical way. Mm. Um, and actually, it turned out for me that's just my experience but turn out it worked well for me mm. uh in terms of you know looking for a job in the industry as a researcher or helping me improve um um in the industry as a researcher as well mm. so um especially like it, it's 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 interesting to see that because like one of the for example one of the main theories i used during my phd thesis is symbolic interaction yep um, which is could be widely used in anthropology and sociology mm. as well, and psychology maybe. So I, I delved into that theory for completing my thesis and also doing the project with one of the banks in Australia for my okay. PhD as well. Yeah. But now, like years after that, um, when I did some projects in industry uh, as a consultant back a, f a, f a few years ago, I found the you know like the interesting behavioral patterns that fall back on that theory as well although yeah. we didn't know we didn't use that theory at all in the project but i found the patterns and the, the humans uh behavior uh, that get aligned with that theory that i used for my phd so mm. it's kind of the connecting adults for all these years in my experience yeah. um i didn't force that happen it just happened because like you get into a certain level in the academic area and then at some point you did the practical work and then they just connected yeah can maybe be, before we move on can we can you just explain very quickly in a layman's term what is symbolic interact in, in, uh, in uh, interaction yeah so symbolic interaction 
is a um, theory that coined by Herbert Bloomer. Mm. Um, he is, he's a very, he's a world-renowned sociologist and psychologist as well. Um, so the theory proposed three aspects mm. in terms of three elements, social interaction, symbol, and meaning. Um, maybe I'll just introduce the three aspects, that three basic principles in that theory. Sure, sure. So the first principle is um, humans act, toward, act towards things on the basis of the meanings they ascribe to, to those things. Mm. And second principle is um, the meaning of such things is derived from people's social interaction. Mm. Um, and the third principle is the meanings are handled and modified through uh, the inter interpretive process that people have. Mm. Um, so it mainly emphasizes three elements, like I, I mentioned, the symbol, the social interaction um, um, situation, and yeah. also the meaning. Okay. It means like one thing doesn't have a st stable meaning in it, yeah. but people have a meaning of things in their social interaction sure. process. Yeah, and, and, um, and the different symbols that represent that as well as the different meanings do that as well, all right? Yeah, so I mean, exactly. So, I, I mean, loosely speaking, I mean, um, based on your, 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 your definition of, you know, symbolic interaction, and I think the interesting thing also is that, um, you know, uh, based on what we have been seeing in the in the industry, I think theories like this, you know, like symbolic interact uh, interaction, uh, even people use using metaphors, right? Um, you know, these are all. I mean, when we break them down, I think, um, from a design perspective. Uh, a lot of this is built based on experiences, right? So especially when you're, do, you're doing uh, industry projects, a lot of it is down to the different um, types of uh, symbols that are unique to a certain type of culture, right? Um, and and we draw a lot of this from, you know, of course the 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 the, the a lot of this is from phenomenology, right? You know, to yeah. say that you know the knowledge that we built is based off, um, you know, person's experiences and other factors that are there. So it's not a pure science, you know. I cannot just take and say, oh, I'm the way I experience things as a Singaporean versus you, somebody who was uh, um, was Chinese from China. Um, you know, experiences differently. We're both Chinese, but when born in different countries, doesn't mean that we experience things exactly. similarly, yeah. right? So, um, so I mean, from from I mean, the thing I wanted to sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, move into, I guess, and, and and get your 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 thoughts is, you know, um, are we are we seeing you know in the industry right now? Um, I, I, you already mentioned how the PhD has provided value in your perspective for your career, which is great, right? But do are we seeing a lot of people who within the industry doing design research, right? Uh, you know, um, are, are, are there a lot of people who who have PhDs as well? And do you feel that that's something that is, um, wouldn't really say a minimum requirement, lah, right? But um, would you say that that having a PhD is something that is uh, very useful when a person wants to go out and do design research in the industry today? That's another good question. Um, <laughs> I think it depends. So when we, okay, so when I see the, P, the PhD's value mm -hmm. in the industry, I may say two aspects. One is its degree itself. Yeah. And the other aspect is your skills or your um, thinking process or your ability of, you know, like deep thinking that um, cultivated during the PhD process, mm -hmm. that two aspects as the value of PhD. So for degree itself, I think it does help okay. <laughs> for, looking good. for a, um, let's say like uh, nailing a job in the industry or, or um, um, getting promoted i'm not a hundred percent sure on, on promotion mm. thing but it's like uh, when people see a, a, a person ha having phd and they automatically relating that as you know like solid theoretical background mm. uh who is definitely able to do research independently mm. um but 
think about that point, it actually still relates back to the second aspects of PhD that I just mentioned, which is the skills mm. or the concepts or the academic abilities. I think yeah. that's the core of the value. Um, it wouldn't be requirements. So it's hard to, like some people ask me sometimes in terms of, okay, I have a PhD, which as a new graduate, mm. uh, I may have just only one or less than two years experience in industry versus another person who has only bachelor or master degree, mm. uh, but having like five years or, or more experience who is more competitive in the industry. It's hard to compare and I don't know, I didn't know how to answer that question, but I think um, the, the value of PhD adding to the computation of someone in the industry boil down to that person's ability of like running research independently mm. uh, and how much, how, uh, familiar are they um, with the research process um, and also communicating with other people. So I think that's a typical process of academics doing their work like day by day, right? Like mm -hmm. they, even they write, their deliveries could be papers or articles, um, but the process of thinking about research is kind of similar as what we do in the industry as well. They think about people, they, they, they try to strategize or plan how to understand this group of people and then they get the original data and then analyze those so i think during the phd process so from my perspective like the phd experience and the industry experience should not be separated mm. it at least in my experience i try that's i, I try to locate my um, phd project with a company in the industry so that in that way I finished my PhD, like getting a degree on one aspect. Yeah. On the other aspect, I kind of um, combined the two parts of my, um, two stages of my, li of my life, but like mm. give me a very soft uh, way of, you know, stand get back to the ground, which is, you know, finding a job in the industry through yeah. doing, a uh, doing a PhD. Yeah. So I think um, it all depends on if that person has the skills through the PhD process and then they think they think deeper in terms of not just about the fact. Let's say like people behave certain way during this COVID-19 situation, right? People mm. buy a lot of toilet papers <laughs> and stock them, you know, without thinking too much about why. Yeah. So that's like a fact. It's interesting fact. Yeah. But a researcher shouldn't just stay on that level in terms yeah. of okay let's say an insight could be people stock the toilet papers crazily mm. uh, without any reason. So yeah. that's actually not very interesting insights. The insights yeah. could be behind that. So yeah. behind the behavior, what's the meanings of that? Mm. Why that behavior is generated? What's the cultural context? Maybe people stock, stock the you know, toilet papers in different countries for different reasons. Yeah. And we want to know why it's just toilet papers and rather than any other product. So there mm. could be stronger reasons behind that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think that's a typical way of thinking for mm. a lot of academic researchers, but it's also valuable to the industry. Definitely. So I think for people who have that um, like strong mind of, of like the ab abductive thinking process mm. and applying that to the industry research is going to be valuable no matter what. Yeah. So, I mean... Um I mean, from what you're 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 saying, there there is, um, there is that value, right? Which is to say that you know you're you're coming in from an academic perspective to really try and um ask the deeper questions, right? In terms of not just uh, oh who are my customers, you know, um, not just doing um, not say market research is 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 not valuable, but it's 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 a different facet, right? So like like maybe market research is all oh, who who are our customers, what do our customers want, yeah. but from an academic academic perspective, it's you know uh, defining what that deeper research question is, um, and also from um the perspective of you know trying to uncover these insights um i think definitely more um we're starting to see um a lot of industries you know also 
um, look out for these insights because you know once you start defining your insights i think from a business perspective the value to the business is that hey i'm not being reactive anymore in a sense right uh, i have the opportunity to um you know be proactive within the industry to try and do something um in the near future based on the insights i've collected so i think i think what you mentioned is 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 definitely um you know very valuable and uh in a very a very clear perspective on how a phd uh candidate um you know based on the acad- academic um, training like it's not to say that a person yeah. it's not to say that a, a person without a PhD cannot have that right I'm, I'm sure yeah, if you yeah. you train them long enough they can also build those skills but it's exactly, just that yeah. but it's just that when you do a PhD that is a very core uh, mindset that most people uh, have to have at this you know that they have to yeah. that, that will that force that that mindset is being fostered while the PhD uh, develops. La. And I think also um, from your perspective, you know, to say that, you know, by doing an industry-led PhD, very different from my own. So my own PhD was not industry-led. I didn't have an industry partner. Uh, yeah. I didn't have an a industry problem that I was trying to solve. So um, w- w- I wouldn't really say mine is very blue sky, la, but um, a bit more conceptual in terms of my PhD that I had. But I think for yours, the value is that, hey, if I do something that is industry that it helps mm. me move into the industry a lot easier right so yeah. i think i think you yeah. know from what you've described i think that that that, that that's uh you know for our listeners who are thinking about doing a phd yeah. um you know not just to do a phd but how you do a phd right how do you yeah. formulate the phd how do you package the phd what are the elements within the phd i think that's a very very important uh, point that you yeah. brought up um the other thing i also wanted to move on so i mean um uh now that you 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 you're working with AHM and the and the health insurance right and i i i i've always felt that your work has always been very interesting because of the different contexts and the different types of companies that you've yeah. been working with so you know now AHM is health insurance um maybe you can tell us uh, on a on a on a general day to day um you know and your previous experience was with Google a tech company right um so the 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 I would say the 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 goals and the objectives are different from each company. But do you feel yeah. that you know, um, working in a tech company like Google versus working in uh you know AHM, which is you know selling health insurance, do you feel that there are major differences? I guess from a methodological perspective, or in terms of the techniques or the tools that are being used, or you know, it, it could be anything. But 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 when you based on the two companies that you've been working with over yeah. the past few years. Uh, I guess what what would you say are the 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 biggest differences you know working in these yeah. two different types of industries? Yeah. So, um, so be- yeah. Okay. Before talking about the differences, I think mm. as I remember during these several years of being a design researcher in my career, one of the biggest challenge just happened during the moment when I moved from Google. Uh, to AHM. Mm. Um, so I worked as a contract contract researcher at Google for a year. And during that year, uh, I think maybe 80 to 85% of my work is around usability testing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for usability testing, like what you have to have is whatever prototypes, or uh, like a high fidelity interface, and then you you took out to not out in the field, but maybe to the lab and invited people either remotely or in person doing the testing um, about the experience on the interfaces. Mm. Um, and I, because I was working in a in a team called Rapid Research, which mm. is the um, a team that. Um, is still growing across different Google offices uh, in the globe. And they do, so their main task is, you know, doing research and communicating the results mm. rapidly. That's why they call it rapid research. And we do like two weeks time frame for a whole usability um, testing or whatever, or it's, it's interview uh, study. Mm. It, it should be within two weeks as well. So we plan, we, we run the study for one day, which usually has uh, six or six to eight sessions uh, in a day. Um, and then we had 
we had debrief the next day and then we write up we analyze and write up the report and communicate to stakeholders and on and on and on so it's it's always the same methodology and same process um but across different streams of of google's product mm. but after that experience like imagine I'd, i've done that for a year so like we like some of my colleagues there we talk about probably we're so familiar with doing you know usability and probably we can write up a usability study plan with my with our eyes closed yeah. um uh, and then suddenly i moved to hm as mm. a traditional industry mm. the context of doing research has changed so the yeah. first reason is um i'm the sole researcher there uh, um okay i don't have any colleagues supporting me or actually i have well uh, i have managers supporting me um but i don't have other peers that on like on the same level uh, of position with mm. me working side by side mm. um um which i have to make a lot of decisions on my own you know mm. like um rather than asking my peers okay where we can go next the other reason is it's so in terms of research it's different maturity levels in google and mm. in hm so I think probably Asia. I'm just an example uh, because I'm working here. I'm sure there are other in traditional industry companies like uh, banks or companies on real estate. They introduced the digital team first, and then they hired design or UX researchers to to you know know more about their customers or users. Um, so on that point, they as a researcher, you have to do definitely much more than just testing the interface. It's not saying their interface is not important. It's definitely mm -hmm. important, but it's not the only thing. A lot of my work when I, when I went to HM um, actually moves a little bit back forward, which is connecting um, to the point where the, the business decision making happens. Mm -hmm. Like it's not only about the, the software part, yeah. but we should know more about our business strategy yeah, yeah. or is the, if there's a new business model, does it work mm. or will that be desirable to yeah. our customers? Of course. So it's kind of a more front stage yeah. of knowing your customers mm. rather than just testing your interface with people. Mm. So in that point, uh, as a researcher, I think I had to think more about um, concept testing rather than interface testing. Yeah. And, I, I need to look after like the stakeholders situation where is there might be a saying as we don't know what we don't know you know yeah, like yeah. that's that's what usually happened to me mm -hmm. uh, communicating with the stakeholders like they give me a lot of data maybe from marketing or other department and say okay how do we want to design a research mm. I, I felt a little bit lost in the beginning you know like mm -hmm. because what's the question first yeah. we don't have a question and we want to design <laughs> research for a bunch of data there almost so, like a new phd right almost like a new phd yeah, exactly <laughs> like it's it's very uh it's very um vague situation yeah, yeah. where it you is. have to explore um on yourself mm. but only but not only for yourself you also have to help other people to to clarify the situation yeah like what's the what's the what's the problem like before we solve solving the problem sure. what's the problem there or yeah. even if there is a problem mm. uh, depending on how we define the what problem is so i have to like make the the situation clearer with the stakeholders and mm. say okay these are a whole bunch of business data and your questions from the business side but uh, from some people with a human center design background mm. uh, and my experience how I transform those business questions into the, you know, design research questions is a challenge for me. And I think that's the part, that's the main different thing. Uh, if I compare, you know, like my experience uh, at Google and HM, but I think it's definitely rewarding of, of working that part because eventually, let's say design research, maybe on one part is kind of realizing the, the human value, like being at, um, being um, ethical with people, you know, not doing the the, the evil thing. Only other thing is, is still make a profit for mm. you know your traditional industry or your company. So you're not just testing the the interface 
in case the problem is not in on the interface. It yeah, could be yeah. much backward, like in a front stage, which yeah. is there's a problem with a business um, um, business solution or or um, the the business model. Yeah. So that's that's the more that's the area I have to you know be responsible more at the moment. Of course, of course. I mean, so I mean, but, but the 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 way you described it, I think uh, what I I I I think is quite interesting is um uh I mean. I think when people talk about design research or they talk about the design process or the user, um, the the user centered design approaches, right? From what you're saying is that your time within one company at Google, um, it's not to say that they didn't do the whole process. I'm sure they did the whole process. You know, uh, yes. uh, it's just that your 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 role within Google was to say that I'm just doing the usability testing for the applications or the screens or the UI and so forth. Um, so you were looking at something that was very specific within the whole design research process. But now with AHM, with the newer company, you're the only re design researcher. You have taken up a, a much more um, a, a, a really a different role right rather than you know and the task that you're doing is more strategic um, there's yeah. more manage it's mo more of a managerial role in that sense uh, you're doing more management stakeholder management um, so when we talk about I think when we talk about the user-centered design process or design thinking or you know, these other schools of thought that are out there I think I think we need to remind ourselves that the the there is no one sort of solid uh, um, way of doing things. There's no fixed rules in that sense. Definitely. Yeah. So, I mean, the way you expressed to me, I think that's the, the, the thing that stood out to me the most, which is to say that your skill sets are the same, of course. I mean, you have the, the, the same knowledge even if you would put into both settings. But your role within each company is different the the scope of things that you're doing is also different you know one is one is more you know how do we look at things from a future uh, within the future you know with with health insurance yeah. what are the bigger pictures what are the bigger questions we're trying to solve whereas from from google uh, you know as a tech company what they were what 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 um you know with this rapid testing and, and all these other techniques they were trying to um do user research or user centered design from a product perspective very specific product perspective so i think the scope of the the project really uh, is very different depending on you know which company you go to uh and um you know and and, and which stage of that process that you're yeah. in uh, yeah so yeah, that's a good yeah. point i mm. i think um the the scope you just mentioned i think that in terms of like a bigger scope, uh, right now when I work when I uh, am working at HM, it's kind of get more familiar with the uh, academic way of doing research. For example, like we know HM is an insurance company, mm. but like the way that we generate the research questions around insurance, uh, the the private health insurance is not only about you know like how much people, uh, how many people would buy certain kind of insurance health. Um, uh, sorry, in insurance uh, service um, for what reasons? Hmm. But it's more about like it's 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 get a little bit detached from only the the product level, but it's getting back to the more root level, which is how people view their status of, of health or hmm. how people prefer to manage their health. And now with uh, on what life stages, like when they hmm. they are still on a young age or they are getting to the middle age or getting older yeah. so we kind of trying to get deeper mm. in terms of the human needs rather than just user or customer needs yeah. so because we believe you know like whatever it's it's clinical services or private health insurance or whatever other health uh, services out there the most basic and deep human needs are kind of similar mm. so everything because we think from our perspective how we provide a good product for the customers even it's a human-centered design thinking mm. but we still think about um, the service or products from just that level mm. what about what people think about their situation from their perspective i think that's the more uh, a more rooted solution for you know getting more empathic with people mm. and using their lens to view okay i'm on this age i have a you know bad health condition in that way they naturally will look for you know a more premium let's mm. say health insurance cover rather than the cheaper ones yeah so 
the, 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 the product strategy or their decision making on selecting a service is always the outcome mm. rather than the need. Their needs is about themselves. Yeah. So I think that's mm. that's kind of a similar way of, of framing the research um, to the academic way of, of doing it because we have a little bit more ownership on the project as well, but also um, like think about the, the more fundamental questions mm. rather than just on the product or service level. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think what you just mentioned is 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 um is is you know I, I agree with um you know because when we we when we think about how you are um you know working on these types of projects right um you know you you're you you are discussing and talking about how you know you're trying to solve the problems and you're trying to uncover some of these things and um so for me i i i always feel that you know what you're doing is design research and what you're doing is different from just research right um because you're a designer we are outcome driven right yeah. um if it's a just if, if if you were not a design researcher if you were just a researcher right i think your roles and responsibilities will be very different um you know you you will you will go and study a, a context you will study about health insurance and then you will share the insights and so on and so forth right but um yeah. and, and that's valuable. Some some company some companies need a researcher to do that, do more exploratories in that sense. But I feel mm. that your role now is that, you know, I'm not just doing the research, but I am actually looking to solve a problem. I'm looking to solve a problem either within the, the company, the organization itself, or I'm trying to look at solving a problem for the community so that my mm. organization can provide that service and provide that product, right? So I feel that yeah. if, if anybody sort of asks me, oh, what's the difference between a design researcher versus a normal researcher? I feel okay. that the, the, the main difference based on what you're, you're telling me and I think based on my own experiences I mean, I see the industry is that, you know, uh, a design researcher is very... Um, is is as in tune with the research as a normal researcher, right? But the perspective that the design researcher takes is not just about the research, but it's about yeah. the organization, it's about the people, it's about the products, the solution, and they are a lot more outcome driven in that sense. Yeah. To say that yeah. my research needs to have an outcome. And it needs to be contributing to something that's bigger than just collecting that research. So yes, you're yeah. answering a research question, but you're, re you're, you're answering that research question in response to solving a solution, solving a problem or providing an outcome at the end of the day. So I think that's where the design aspect I always feel comes in when it comes to design research or user-centered design, which is not just about collecting the data, finding out the insights. Just now we talked about the, you just now talked about the toilet paper, excessive buying, right? Sure, we have those insights. But if your organization is the government body, if it's the, um, if it's the, uh, if it's the supermarket, right, uh, or if it's um, the community partners, whose value that is, the design researcher's role is not just about getting the insights and saying, oh yeah, people are buying toilet paper, but it's about saying that how can we either sell more of our other product, let's say if you were Big W's design researcher, right? Or if you're the government's yeah. resu design researcher, it'll be more of, okay, how do we manage the use of um, the, 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 um, the supply chain of the, of the toilet paper or something else? So it's using that research to, 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 to uncover those insights, but using those insights for a very clear objective. Like, I, I feel that's yeah. that's a very major difference um, when when it comes to d being a design researcher. Do you do you agree with that or do you think that yeah, um, it's a bit different? Definitely. I'm just I'm just saying something to support that because I think that's a good point. Uh, in terms of there's always the tension, you know, like between pure research and the research that help to improve the products or achieve the goals of the companies. Mm. I, I think that's also that's interesting. Just reminding me, like a, a key, um, uh, not personality but like character um, between let's say junior or mid-level of researchers with senior or even lead researchers. Mm. So because 
let's say design or UX researchers in this context, they all live in the environment of business, right? Mm. So they have to land their research or, you know, the, the outcome of research on product mm. or the product of ecosystem rather than just for nonprofit projects. Mm. Um, usually like for junior or mid-level researchers, you know, like they, they may be training in, in through the academic process. I've been through that stage as well. Like I have a ut- ut- utopian in terms of doing research in the company, you know, like, oh, don't just stay on the shallow, like superficial level. Let's go into the deep level in terms of the human needs or the mm. more fundamental questions. But if that, though, if those outcomes won't help much or say in a very plain way, like how much products um, the companies, like the profits of the, uh, of the companies can make eventually, um, would, we, would we still say the value of the research is high? Mm. Or, you know, like how do we judge, how do we assess the, the efficiency, efficiency of that research considering we've, you know, in, invested a lot of money and time and people to do the research. Mm. So I think ex- experienced or senior uh, researchers, they would, they would definitely have that pri- priority in their mind. Although yeah. by doing the research, they won't, they try to not get biased by, you know, the business strategies or mm. the, or the custom or the uh, stakeholders expectations to inf- to affect them uh, mm. while the research during the pr- uh, research process yeah. but they always pro- prioritize okay so how my research outcome would help the customer uh, will help the companies to make decisions mm. to move forward yeah. and how would that help or you know correct the direction of the business strategy in the future and you know avoid the risks of you know launching a, a wrong strategy and yeah. waste tons of money there yeah. so that's always uh, like a basic rule mm. as being an industry researcher yeah. so definitely yeah i agree with what you said it's yeah. It, it took some time for, like, I just talked about my own experience. It took mm. uh, actually a long time to get used to that mindset. Yeah. But when a researcher doing more and more research in the industry, they, they will have a sense. Like, it couldn't be just taught from the textbook. They have to practice that through the, the projects and, and have more conversations with stakeholders. That's mm-hmm. why, like, I think some articles talk really good in terms of uh, the researchers should not only be empathic with users or customers but also with stakeholders yeah because their common interests are usually around the profit or the value of the company mm-hmm. so it gets you to a certain direction where you can help the company on one hand but also you know stay in the in the integrity of doing research on the other hand yeah. as a researcher Definitely. so i think the combination of that makes like a researcher on a higher level um yeah so i think yes that's that's a that's a good point and i i i also want to add on to say that actually i i think you also touched on this point just now um when it came comes to the roles so um i don't think that you know the label is that important like you know you could go in and be called a researcher a design researcher um a lead researcher a lead ux researcher or whatever right um I, I, I'm not too I don't I think people we need to put more focus on the the roles and the job descriptions and um and and I think the, the, the things that need to be done within their companies now because I think what we're talking about here is not just about saying oh a design researcher is more valuable than a researcher or so and so forth but um I think these labels when we come to the industry we're seeing a lot of these different labels being used you know like some companies are just you know one calls a UX researcher somebody calls mm-hmm. it a design researcher somebody calls a a, a senior um um, you know, design eth- anthropologist or design ethnographer or whatever, right? So, but when we look at it, I think the 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 key that we're sort of of trying to I think put across here is that design research or the things that we do from a u- human centered or user centered perspective is that you know your research question is important. It's asking the right questions, you know, and from a research perspective, that's good. But to get to add more value to a business, to add more value to your stakeholders, to add more value to your 
your customers at the end of the day, or even your yeah. your internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, governmental, tertiary stakeholders, all these different stakeholders, it is about you know making sure that you're adding value through that research, right? So yeah. I th- I think that's where we need to be able to set that um uh, that set set that benchmark in 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 terms of research and where we add value as a researcher or where v- design innovation comes in uh it's you know not so much about the labels i feel but it's more of the value that's that's being provided to the organization as well as the different stakeholders that are there um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so I think I think that 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 is uh um you know that's that's a lot of things that we 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 we, yeah. we sort of spoke about yeah yeah. yeah I think I think it's also maybe shaped by the stage of the company, like the the maturity of of its its digital capability mm-hmm. or you know business model. Like some com- some companies like startups, they are still in. For example, like H well HM is not a startup right now already, but like it's still kind of exploring a lot of different uh, business models uh, to be launched. So in that way, I have the chance of doing a, like a lot of more exploratory research, no matter what my title is. But for some like tech companies, they have a very mature digital process or you know like it's it, it was born from a digital context so in that way they may put more work on the you know evaluative research or usability testing so yeah like you said i think the title wouldn't be you know much matter it's 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 mm-hmm. it's about what the company shape is mm-hmm. and and um and it's its stage um at that moment mm-hmm. yeah so i mean um I think you know. I think that sort of. Uh, um, I think that that's a nice way to sum up, lah. So today's today's session, because, um, you know what 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 where what. I think what impacts the role of the researcher also is the stage of that company. You know whether yeah. the the com- I mean a, a company like Google does a lot of u- user experience design. They do they you know from internationally both you know from within the the local markets and from their headquarters as well, right? So um, they do it on all ends. So whichever s- how how I guess how far in or how deep they're in from a design research or from a design. Um, um, from a design perspective, also impacts um, you know how how innovative the company is is um, dependent on what stage they are at as well. So I mean, yeah. um, you know, I think I think the advice we 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 can give to um to to people who are looking at jobs within the design research, um, um within the design research field or within the user experience or the human centered design field. I think um, a big part of that is to see not just the role and uh, the job title. Or, okay, money, of course, is important, right? But also, is also about the company, right? Because how yeah. uh, you know, for example, you know, HM, of course, is a company that's that's been around for many years, right? Um, but the perspectives that they're trying to take, the business models they're trying to take, they are still exploring, which is, which some people may like. Some people may, yeah, I really want to go into the company and be part of that. Um, that new process to be part of that whole process where I can explore different things, I can talk to different stakeholders, I can be part of this new groundbreaking um, business model or this new groundbreaking um, uh, decision-making process where some people want to go into uh, a well-oiled machine already. You know, all the different um, research methodologies are already set in in place. Um, yeah. All of the different tools are already done, um, and all the different techniques are already done very well. And you just have to come in and be part of that tool, right? So I think you 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 express it quite well, you know, with your own experience. You say that you know one company, um, you know, with Google, you are already part of your part of that system, all right? Whereas yeah. now you're you're in a new, uh, it's not a startup. Com- it's not a startup, but the 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 feeling of it, the 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 processes that are trying are they are growing, um are similar to a startup to a certain extent. So I think I think that that really um, is is a good point that, that that we brought up which is about how the type of company uh, you know also is a very important uh, factor when it comes to design research. So yeah, um, yeah that that's so all. I think I think we we've covered quite a lot today. Um, you know, uh, we want to um, sort of thank Weidan for for joining us today on the Everything Design show. Um, Weidan, do you have anything to to tell maybe I want end off with um, you know if if anybody wants to go into this field, this last question, which is, if anybody wants to go into this field of design research, 
right? What's your one tip that you would give to them? Well, I think that's uh, another tricky question. <laughs> um, okay, maybe I'll just give a, a tip from my own experience. Mm, of course, of course. Which is, which is learning learning knowledge from anthropology. Ah, yes, so yes. School of anthropology. It sounds like a complex discipline, but mm. um, but for me, well, I'm definitely not an expert in anthropology and I'm not an anthropologist, but neither I think I, it's got I. very mm. good tips Oh, like we, we've we seen a lot of books in terms of how to do UX research, how to do mm. design research. But like I mentioned a little bit, the more fundamental methodology and mindset mm. are still in the traditional discipline like yeah. anthropology, particularly. So it just helped me a lot in terms of, yeah. you know, how to think about humans, how to think about uh, people from a systematic way rather mm. than just look at the one aspect of person. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's going to be definitely helpful. Yeah, all right. That's good. That's a good tip. So um, go pick up an anthropolo- uh, a book on anthropology. Uh, I think um, there's one uh, by Bernard uh, on uh, research methods in anthropology. I think I have the book. Uh, I think it's in the office. Uh, but uh, yeah, if anybody wants to borrow that book, please let me know. I'll, I'll hand that book over to you. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's a good tip. You know, um, go back to the basics, right? Um, UX, design thinking, uh, a lot of um, you know new terms that are, 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 are that we're hearing in the industry definitely. Um, but at the core of uh, these new schools of thought, these these new different ways of working, uh, actually is grounded in a lot of the social sciences that we've been you know that has been around for hundreds of years. You know, anthropology, sociology, psychology. Um, you know, yeah, I think definitely. a lot of them are a lot of businesses are now seeing those values and saying that. Let me let me you know you know bring in these different uh, more academic theories within the industry to really get those insights that we really need. So yeah, um, yeah um, I guess that's uh, that that's a good way to end off. You know, thank you very much, Weidan, um, for joining thank us today. Um, yeah, so uh, we will see you in the next episode. And uh, if you want to get in contact with Weidan, I will have his uh, description, uh, his contact details, uh, and his links to his social uh, media handles in the descriptions. So uh, yeah, please um, you know like uh, follow us and uh, subscribe to us. Uh, and you know we're always open to feedback. And thank you very much for joining us today on another episode for the everything design show Uh, all right see you guys thanks and have a good have a good day and thank you bye-bye see you bye-bye yeah bye we're done